Here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. A fellow, uh, I guess we would say a co-conspirator. <laughs> a, a fellow who, like me, just flat out loves the 10 millimeter cartridge and pistols for the 10 millimeter. Mark Garney from Ruger. Mark, how are you, sir? Fantastic. How are you, Tom? I'm good. We've been talking about tens for a while, and the fact I, I kind of suspect—I don't have this knowledge—but I kind of suspect that when you guys brought out the 10 millimeter in the SR 1911 several years ago, that was a Mark Gurney project. Uh, well, no, not solely a Mark Gurney project, but I think it had something to do with holding my breath and, until I turned blue until I got my way. But <laughs> they are jumping up and down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and say, I want it. I want it. <laughs> Okay, so the obvious question is why? What is it about the 10 that you like so much? Oh, well, it's fun, right? I mean, it, it has a legacy, right, from way back when, you know, far too powerful for the FBI to shoot, so they had to downgrade it to 40 short and weak. You know, there's, there's just a, right. a lot of fun. all that stuff. Yeah, so, so there's that. But there's also, it's a pretty capable cartridge, right? For a, for a semi-automatic pistol, it's really hard to upgrade from there. And yeah, you can go bigger in revolvers, but for a semi-automatic, right. uh, that's as good as it's going to get. And you've got quite a range of, of cartridge energies that you can get. You know, your, your basic, uh, you know, mainstream manufacturers are, are pretty tame, so they're very shootable. Mm -hmm. uh, but then if you look at uh, the, the good stuff from Buffalo Bore or Double Tap or Underwood, um, right. you know, you can load them up. I wouldn't want a steady diet on it. I couldn't afford a steady diet on them either. Right. Uh, True. But but, there, but there's a few in-betweens that I think are, are pretty good. The Winchester Silver Tip has mm -hmm. been a venerable cartridge in 10 that, that uh, was at 175 grains at 1,200 in a five-inch barrel. That's, that's Well, all right. Let, let, me, let me share this with that. you. You talk about happenstance. I, just, I was going through some boxes we moved you know, recently, and I'm unpacking some more yep. boxes, and I pull out my old dog-eared copy of Jim Cirillo's book, Guns, Bullets, and Gunfights, Lessons and Tales from a Modern-Day Gunfighter. Jim Cirillo went 17-0 and 0 in gunfights. He uh, never got hurt, <laughs> and everybody he shot pretty much got hurt. Uh, this was a serious gunfighter uh, in yep. the 1980s or so. But he was a tinkerer. He used revolvers. And what he ended up with is kind of his ideal gunfighting handgun, which was interesting, was a slightly loaded down 41 Magnum. And in his book, he says, pushing a silver tip 175 grain bullet at 1250 feet per second. I went, wait a minute, that's a 10 millimeter. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I know. And of course, the 10 millimeter was in large part a creation that came out of the mind of Jeff Cooper. Right. He said something about nine millimeter being adequate for some situations, but the serious work, you needed a caliber that began with a four. Right? Well, it's a, you know what I like about the 10 is the versatility. It is a, and you mentioned it, you got all these different loads. You can have a self-defense load for two-legged predators, personal defense. You can have yeah. practice loads using kind of lighter FMJs out there. And then if you yeah. like to go hike it in the woods, you have loads that while Neither of us would say if we had to go take on a grizzly, this is what we would take on or, or carry. But there's some pretty capable loads in 10 millimeter. Yes, like you said, the uh, some of the hard cast bullets. When you when you get a, a big enough animal that you really want penetration, mm -hmm. uh, you take a hard cast bullet and you know push it in at what 1350 or something like that. It, it's going to be hard to beat, especially if you have a semi-automatic where you've got a, a more than more than six rounds, right? To, to well, help yeah. You and then a commander size uh, pistol, which is what the GT25 is, it's a standard size grip. So you've got eight plus one, and then with aftermarket mags, even nine plus one. But the, the Ruger comes with eight round magazines. Actually, the GT25 comes with three of them. And I, let me ask you, I've had people say, well, why commander? And I know you like a commander size 1911. So what is it about the commander that you like? Well, I carry a five inch ten millimeter as my daily carry gun when when weather permits, right? It's um, right. so I'm carrying a big gun, that's what it is. And there's only every now and then you know, carry it um, in the waistband. Mm -hmm. 
And it's every now and then, depending on what I'm, what I'm sitting on, the, the, let's say the chair can just touch the muzzle and can yes. lift the gun out of, out of the holster just a little bit. Yes. I've um, had that exact so, same thing happen, and, and it's yeah. a little disconcerting. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the, they say one of the loudest sounds is, uh, is uh, you know, a discharge that you weren't expecting. But right. one of the loud sounds is your gun falling on the floor, right? Which, yes, know. exactly. And, I, and I've, I've had to you know, sit down, and it actually pushes the muzzle up, and it starts to slide upward in the right. holster. So it's only three-quarters of an inch. And I know people say, well, but I want all the uh, velocity I can get. I, I get that, okay? Yep. So wh what are we talking about? I mean, you're the engineer. What are we talking about in, in velocity loss? 50, 75 I, feet per second, maybe? Boy, if it's even that, um, I, I guess the short answer is I don't really know. But if you look at the variability from lot to lot and even round to round, and especially if it's in a, an encounter for, like you said, two-legged predators in mm -hmm. conversational distances, I don't think it matters a bit. Okay. Yes, you might want all the velocity you want, but, um, but, it's, but it's you, we need to. It, you, yeah, and you also want to make sure it's the gun you're going to bring with you. If you're not going to take it with ah. you because uh, it doesn't carry well or whatever, so the commander is, is just a perfect size. The big gun in your safe and, is not doing you a lot of good. Right, right, right. We're, we're talking with Mark Gurney. Mark I had a, a fellow. He says because I was talking about last week. I said we well, you know this gun was supposed to come out last year. But with COVID and everything else, it couldn't. I said, you know, so it's kind of a GT25 plus one. He says, no, 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 you're, you're missing it. He says, because it got delayed before the pandemic, we should call it the GT25 plus P. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So we're, we're doing this one through the Ruger Custom Shop. And a lot of people are, quite frankly, they're just not real familiar with that it's the custom shop is still fairly new and a lot of people don't know about it could you just describe what it is and who those guys are uh, i can try but it's it's not a, a what it is and it's not those guys okay so each of the custom shop guns are made within their respective lines so the the, the gt25 is made on the sr 1911 line as let's say as much as we can do in that line for the standard guns and then they get pulled out and given extra attention, extra extra attention to detail, mm -hmm. uh, better parts, better fit. Uh, so it's the same gun built in the in the same factory, and in some cases by the same people. Mm -hmm. But they're pulled aside for you know the, the crowning touches, the better details, and, and things that can really set them apart. So we're taking the standard guns we make, the good guns we make, and making them great. Uh, it's, so you know, your it's, your GT25 is made in the SR1911 line. It's not really unlike taking a gun that you buy, get it at the dealer, and then saying, I'm now going to take it to a gunsmith and have them do some other things to it to make it just the way I want it. Correct. Uh, you know, for instance, the custom shop precision rifle. You know, we have a, a, a heavier contour stainless steel barrel, uh, aftermarket muzzle brake, trigger tech trigger. Um, all those things add up to something that if you had to do them individually, it might, might be kind of expensive. Right. So we try to put them together in a way that we think most people will really, really like them. Of course, they, they cost more, but they're not, I don't think they're, I don't think they're unreasonable given the amount of detail we put into them. Well, I went on market, you know, looked at the marketplace, looked at other 1911s that are spec'd out, basically like what we have done with the GT25. And for those who want to go look at it, it's guntalk.com slash GT25. Uh, retail price is sixteen ninety nine. That's what they sell for. Um, it looks like about $2,500 to $3,000 if you went to one of the name brand, very well-known makers who make very good guns. But I would put this up against anybody. This thing is a really nice gun. It is quite the shooter. It's an all-steel gun. And I think in there I would go back to your engineering expertise with a 10 millimeter i think steel is important what do you think absolutely agree and having carry a five inch uh 1911 weight isn't everything uh the 1911s are so thin especially when you're carrying them in the waistband they're so close mm -hmm. to your hip the weight disappears um and of course if you're going to shoot um you not only want the longevity of steel if you get a hot rod cartridge like 10 but Recoil control is so much better with it a few is. more ounces done. And it's interesting you talk about it just kind of disappearing. 
That's assuming, and I always assume this, but not everybody does, you have a good holster and a good gun good belt. 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 Right. It's, I mean, it's just, it's the foundation. If you don't have that, nothing else is going to work, and it's going to be floppy and uncomfortable and squishy, and you're going to yeah. hate carrying it. And that's why you're going to say, well, I want a little bit lightweight gun. Okay, fine. That's But you're trying to do that. In this case, because you didn't have the right gear, you can carry a full-size 1911 and have it be comfortable if you have the right gear. Right. And, and it's crazy, you know, how much the gun costs, but you, you, it's not asking for a lot more to invest in a, a good holster and a good, sturdy belt. Yeah. No, exactly right. So, all right. So, have you hunted with, I know you like to hunt, have you hunted with a 10 millimeter? Um. <laughs> I have walked in the woods with a 10 millimeter <laughs> with, a, with an opportunistic mindset, but no, I, I have not taken game with it. Uh, I, I, I've done the same thing. I've taken my gun for walks in the woods and not shot them before. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. I'd like to think I, I shoot reasonably well, but I think I'd have to be pretty close to an animal to, uh, to try to do something with oh, a yeah. handgun. It's kind of uh, like bow hunting. I mean, for me, it's probably... 30, 40 yards is about max going to be, honestly, for me. Right. Kind of right. But, but like am. you said, if we ever go somewhere where there are things with teeth and claws that want to harm us, that, that's the thing to bring along. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, no doubt. Tell you what, another quick break here. When we come back, Mark, I'm going to give you the floor. You kind of give us an update on some of the a real fast, rapid-fire delivery of some of the new things going on at, at Ruger because you guys have brought out a lot of cool guns over the last six months that people may not know about. We're talking with Mark Garney from Ruger, obviously Ruger.com. You can check that out. And if you want to see more about the GT25, oh, God, I love it. I've been going on to some of the online sites, and people are going, oh, yeah, and they're talking about it and bad-mouthing it. People who've never seen it, never held it, never shot it, and they're telling you everything that's wrong with it. You're going, really? Try to make yourself look big by cutting down somebody else again. Oh, well. 